thought for the day. The way we talk to ourselves creates our reality. Welcome to 7 Minutes for Yourself. I'm Christina Ina, and I'm so glad you've joined me for what I believe will be 7 of the most enriching minutes of your day. Let's take this time to reconnect with ourselves and improve our well-being. In today's episode of 7 Minutes for Yourself, we are using positive affirmations to help improve our self-esteem. Have a listen. Your reaction is based on your temperament, your personality, and your own inner self-talk. Let me give you an example. Suppose you send someone an email pitching an idea that you really hope they like. You're all excited at what you put in the email, and you're just waiting to hear back from them. But you don't immediately hear back. An entire day passes, or maybe even a couple of days. And what's your automatic thought? This is a situation where you've put yourself out there, you've made yourself vulnerable, and you're not getting any response. In other words, the blank slate. Person A may think, hmm, I wonder if my email went to her spam folder. That's giving the situation the benefit of the doubt. Person B may think, I wonder if she hates my idea and she's just trying to figure out a way to tell me. This is a negative assumption. Person C may say, I've totally made myself look stupid in this email and now I've ruined my chances to get through to this person. That's an even more negative response. So where do you fall? Do you automatically think negatively or positively? We all have blind spots. In a car, the wider the blind spot, the more dangerous the vehicle. Introspection allows you to narrow your blind spot. You won't be able to get rid of it, the blind spot completely, but the narrower, the better. Here's another concept. Projection is a defense mechanism whereby we assume others believe the negative thoughts we have about ourselves. This is one of the ways that you can wallow in low self-esteem. When you have a head full of negative thoughts, you don't need other people to judge you. You have judged yourself and believe that the other person is the one who came up with the idea. Here's an example. Let's say I tell Joe how busy I've been lately and how I'd love to take a vacation. Joe looks at me with a smirk and says, yeah, that'd be nice. I think, What was that smirk all about? He must think I'm trying to get out of work and that I'm lazy. Now the truth is, Joe smirked because he could relate to my desire to go on vacation. He's been working tons of hours and he'd like a vacation. That's what Joe's really thinking, but I projected my own thoughts onto Joe. Now let's look at my thoughts. I know how hard Joe's been working and I also know that I haven't been working as hard. In fact, I just give enough to get through the day and then I'm ready to go home. And now here I am ready to go on vacation. I don't deserve a vacation. So in reality, I'm the one who believes that I've been lazy at work. But I believe that Joe is the one who thinks I'm lazy. And what's the evidence for this? His smirk. So what's the problem with this? Well, it's problematic on a couple of levels. One. I've assigned negative thoughts to Joe that he doesn't have. And I can build up negative feelings about him and resentments um, that he doesn't deserve because they're based on false information. The second problem ties directly into the issue of affirming yourself. So it's time to lean in here. When you project negative feelings onto others, you set yourself up for needing them to affirm you and build you up projection reinforces your negative thoughts. How do you recognize this in yourself? Well, let me deconstruct the thing with Joe a little bit more. In my interaction with Joe, the real problem is that I feel guilty for not putting in as many hours as Joe and my other colleagues. Rather than look down on Joe for thinking that I'm lazy, first I have to recognize the feeling. And the trigger here is that I believe that I know what Joe is thinking. And that's mistake number one. Unless you believe in the paranormal, it's safe to assume that you cannot read people's minds with accuracy. So if you tend to be a mind reader, recognize that when you hear yourself say, I'm sure he thinks this, and just fill in the blanks with whatever that is, that's a red flag that you're probably projecting. 
So, okay, that's one step. Identify that you're projecting. The next step is to flesh out the negative automatic thoughts and replace them with positive ones. But you have to recognize your real pain point. So in this case, I could say to myself, well, I'm not lazy, I'm a hard worker. But that's not gonna have much impact because it might not be true, number one, and it's too superficial. My real pain point is that I feel guilty for not working hard lately. And the way to affirm myself is statements like, my worth is, is not, my worth in my job is not defined by how much I've worked lately. I contribute to the team. They still find me valuable. Furthermore, Joe doesn't have time to keep tabs on me. He's got his own life. Those are the things that could help me um, kind of blot out the, the assumptions and negative thoughts that I have that, that I'm putting on to Joe. You have to be able to affirm yourself internally. Needing other people to affirm you makes you too vulnerable and dependent on others for validation. Other people have their own needs and they can't always lift you up and rescue you from your negative thoughts about yourself. This is not to say that external validation isn't good. Compliments and recognition are great and they feel great but they can't be required for you to feel whole and complete. That concludes today's episode of 7 Minutes for Yourself. Please take a moment to rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. Today and every day with your kiddo is a gift. Enjoy it. Thanks for tuning in.